Okay, sorry about that. A slight technical mishap, but I believe we should be good to go now. <coughs> so let's just skip through this uh, risk warning on the screen here. Bit of a downturn in markets today. Um, European markets managed to just about avoid a, um, a losing week last week in, uh, in terms of st shares, but not so much in, in US markets. And uh, we'll have a look, I think, s to start with at those US indices, because uh, we're, um, we're pretty close to, to putting in a, a fairly obvious top. And so uh, we want to review the, the possibilities there. <coughs> So let's jump straight over to this uh, the US 30, but we'll look at the S S and P 500 as well, the US SPX. So I admit this is not the cleanest looking uh, chart I've ever drawn with these two channels pointing the wrong way. The reason I have this blue channel here is that um, it's it's just an easy way to draw uh, a possible head and shoulders. So I've connected these two lows here, and you can see that these two highs connect quite well. So that would be the left shoulder, the head and then the right shoulder and so what you can see is we've actually broken below that uh, that rising uh, rising neckline uh, so officially according to that according to this head and formation which does have nicely lined up um, left and right shoulders um, you yeah, know we've broken down and uh, we're going to see the distance from the head to the to the neckline uh, projected to the downside, so that would take us below 17,000 um, if this formation is to believe. Uh, it's not always that straightforward, and that's why I've drawn in this other channel. So we're obviously in a downwards channel here. The bottom of this channel would be tested in and around sort of 17,420 maybe by the time we get there. Could could be sooner if we test down here today. Uh, and then we've obviously got this low from the 24th of March. So to me, this is uh, a strong area of support that we have just below uh, the breakout area. So, um, you know, it's kind of uh, <coughs> how much caution do you want to apply here? T to my mind, OK, we've got the, the breakout, but still some heavy support below. There will likely be some people buying into, into this low. And so do you want to be fighting against those that layer of buyers that could overcome the, the sellers from the head and shoulders formation? So below 17,400, I think it's a bit more clear cut um, that we're breaking down because we cleared a couple of hurdles of support there if, if we get to that stage. Um, trading, as you know, is never always straightforward. We could always get a false breakdown through that support, um, but it's just, just less likelihood, I would say, of a breakdown through support at that point than there is up here when there's an obvious reason why it would be a false breakdown. You just The other support holds. Um, so it would take us below 17,000. 17,000 could be a mark at which people get involved, but it depends how quickly we slide because we've come up so fast. There's not that much in the way of solid support uh, on the way back down again. And so we could easily retrace half of those gains, um, which would take us well below 17,000. If we just have a quick look, maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but if we just look at the bottom of the rally, 50% um, takes us nicely down to this March 10th low here um, at uh, 16.830. So that's a possible area. Obviously, the 17.150 is as well, but um, you know, I, I would say there's a there's a couple of reasons here. This this spike high on the 26th of Feb, uh, this March 10th low, and probably not far off if we just um, if we actually do project down from this. Uh, head and shoulders pattern uh, from the breakout area which is here that takes us to 16932 so this kind of vicinity um, could be next stop for markets if we get a confirmed breakdown here um, so what do I think is going to happen well I, I think you just have to trade according to the the pattern but I think you know there's still a kind of despite we're having a, a some difficult weeks as I mentioned three weeks lower in a row now I don't it's not been panic selling by any stretch of the imagination and I think we could still hold this area and attempt a little run higher this week perhaps
but uh, it is worrying when the same sort of pattern happens in multiple markets and so you can see the same thing here really here's the left uh, left shoulder head right shoulder in the S&P 500 and again just that kind of here's there's arguably the neckline which is maybe a little flatter could also draw a rising one through these lows and through these uh, peaks but again you have this uh, 2020 kind of area which would be another layer of support with the 200 day moving average just below there as a possible place that people buy into the market and ignore this um, neckline breakdown now not just the US we jump to the the UK a bit more of a kind of extended pattern here and not such a big rally preceding it a uh, bit of a a long left shoulder here um, but still the markets run up come back down and then failed again at the same kind of levels that was uh, according to the left shoulder forming what could potentially end up being a right shoulder um, so, so this kind of block of support I think has been the kind of mid of the range you know if you look at this as the kind of maybe the main the general price range that we've been dealing with apart from these breakdowns in, in the start of the year you know you could call this 6050 kind of almost like a mid I mean you're probably mid of, uh, of something closer down here kind of range so if you call it the 6,000 to 6,500, uh, sorry, the 5,500 5, to 6,500 range, uh, obviously 6,000 is bang in the middle of that. And that's kind of what we're getting down towards at the moment. So a break back through 6,000 being the middle of that broad range uh, could take us for another test down to the lows that we saw at the start of the year. But again, this is all premised on a, on a break of support, which has not happened yet. At the moment, we're still holding just about above our broken down sloping trend line, uh, but we haven't got out of the range, um, which you would have wanted to see, really. But we've come right back down for a test on the trend line. And, uh, you know, we certainly could move high from here. I think there's a decent chance of that. Might depend on how oil survives at $50 a barrel, because we've just hit 49 in Brent today. Um, so. 50 is an area that a lot of oil companies have been citing and let's just jump over to the Brent price while we're talking about it 50 is an area that a lot of um, oil companies talked about as, uh, uh, as being profitable again a few shale companies have said that they'll start producing more oil again uh, they'll turn the wells back on when um, uh, when we get to 50 um, so perhaps with 50 being bounded around us uh, by a number of companies it could be an area that um, that speculators like you and I uh, decide to, to, to get less bullish on the market it does obviously correspond to the top of this channel again um, at the moment the, the, the oil market is looking very constructive certainly not time for calling a top you just got to be reminded I think of the significance of these round numbers particularly for for the bigger investors so what I wouldn't be surprised to see is if we get a little push above 50 perhaps even a little bit above the peak that we saw in uh, November only to roll over again obviously very hard to call how big that uh, that rollover could be but uh, you know I could see it getting back below 40 So I've, I've kind of started down the road of commodities, so I may as well stick with it. Gold. Um, I mentioned this. Um, <coughs> you know, obviously had these two levels on the uh, the webinar last week, and um, so obviously had the level there, which was worked. Though to be fair, what I was saying is that actually maybe this level won't hold, and we could get a rollover down to one two two seven. That hasn't happened yet, so. You know, you've got to accept when your initial assumption is wrong. And we've, t we've taken out the high here from the 12th of May um, for, for the moment for today. And uh, we're looking like we're going to break down, a uh, break above, which on maybe a, um, depends what kind of trigger you use for, you know, your kind of timing of the trades. You know, say that you've we've moved above a resistance. Well, okay, what do you, um, what's the trigger for your trade? Um, we're right at this um, the connection of these two peaks so 
definitely resistance definitely that old line coming in again probably not the um, not the the best risk toward buying at these levels after this decent run up we've had um, in the last day or two but then again once we do get above 1284 you know again that's a confirmation of a, a bullish break back through these um, former supports turned resistance I think probably ideally here we'd be looking for a little dip off the the declining trend line to look to use as an opportunity to to get into the market because we tried to break down here we tried to make a new fresh lower low but it, it hasn't happened we held 1260 very well so now we're you know now we're back up above 1280 and the market's looking strong it, it it's range bound but you know obviously we're looking for it to break out of the range Uh, what's supporting all today is that we had a note from um, from Goldman Sachs, and it's not they're not the the first, and there's there's a number of firms that are um, getting a bit more bullish on the oil price, um, which you know given a lot of the same firms were calling for sub twenty dollars just a few months ago, you could take it as a contrarian signal that we're we you know we're reaching a top when suddenly the the tide starts to change so obviously. Had copper in last last week's webinar. Just mentioned that we'd um, broken down quite significantly, and we now we've just found support again at um, at 206. So if we're in a, if we're in a range here, uh, this is an area you could expect the price to rebound from, and it's starting to look like it might. We had an we had an inside day on Friday, and at the moment we're breaking above that inside day. So if we get a close above a lot, uh, last Friday's peak. You know that's a, a confirmation of a, a kind of bullish breakout at a support level, which could see us um, push back higher. Looks like RSI could get back above 30 if the strength we're seeing so far continues. And bearing in mind we had some quite weak data from China overnight, if copper can put off a a higher close, um, then that's obviously performing in the face of weak data. We did, to be fair, have a uh, a note from uh, the People's Bank of China um, mentioned in my morning note this morning uh, that uh, they're willing to, to step in um, and that they w could do things to um, improve the numbers that we saw that were weaker over the weekend so over to FX um, you know I haven't mentioned any of the economic data that's coming out this week bit inflation dominated uh, we've got UK CPI and US CPI released tomorrow in the UK is expected to pretty much stay flat um, with uh, CPI at 0.5% and core CPI at 1.5% um, in the US obviously it's just um, you know we we've heard some slightly more hawkish comments even from t today we heard uh, Mr. Lacker from the Fed uh, suggesting there's a, a strong case for a June rate hike the market certainly doesn't agree at this point um, but if we have some stronger inflation data from the US uh, then obviously that would kind of support that that more hawkish cause. Um, in my mind, June is a is a total write-off, but it, there's a chance if uh, if things turn around enough that they could even ch maybe choose to hike rates in a in a month where there's not a press conference. Um, if they do go for the press conference option, which probably I think they would, the fairly dovish conservative bunch really, that would be September. Mm -hmm. But all that, um, all that can be put into context with the uh, the dollar index here, uh, which on the June contract has has risen up from 92 up to 90, close to 95. So we've had a decent run up in the dollar, uh, which probably to some extent is not all altogether um, a coincidence that we've seen a downturn in in U.S. equities at the same time we've seen a a jump in the dollar. looking at the uh, looking at the euro now um, we basically you know we reference this um, this pattern I think in snapshot videos uh, I think Michael did one on 
this and I think I've certainly covered the euro or maybe that was against the yen uh, but um, you know this being a potential breakout area of a longer term range you know we had a fairly clear cut um, uh, shooting star formation on the weekly chart above that fairly obvious range resistance that's been in place basically since for you know over a year since February last year in the euro and uh, what it's starting to look like now is that we're going to head down to the the bottom of the range you know there's going to be a lot of chop in the meantime probably um, that said things head down quicker than they head up so you know we had a big drop from the from there uh, but it took us longer to get back up again it's a strong resistance so it, it's understandable that we would break down a few times uh, you know we, it would hold a few times before eventually breaking um, but we're in range bound conditions and uh, you know that in that the law you know the probabilities suggest that the range holds um, when there's a test of the the upper bound or the lower bound and that it's going to travel back to the other the other end So we're basically just we're just holding on to the the 113, uh, 114 sorry round number in in euro dollar, and uh, but to my mind we 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 get a a, a test down at 112 again. So we had um, a similar pattern in cable, where it had a big uh, bearish engulfing candlestick day, and we pretty much headed lower since. So obviously that was just a, a, a failed attempt to break above the uh, the peaks from February, and we just dropped. We, you know, we've dropped fairly sharply since then. I don't know if it's it's as it, you know I don't think that the Brexit referendum, unless the polls suddenly go a bit crazy and the and the and the Leave campaign really starts coming out of the head, I'd be surprised if we take out 138 um, and and heading it down to new fresh lows in cable. I think we're in a range. Uh, we've obviously failed to break out of this range, and you know you could call the very bottom of the range 138 and change. Uh, but we've actually held support pretty well at 140 and if we do jump out to this uh, monthly chart we can see that um, you know we're hitting some pretty significant levels here and this 140 has been big um, for you know since the financial crisis so um, we it's already possible that we put in a low in cable and that we're heading back up to 1.7 again um, obviously the the vote is only uh, a month away now and uh, to my mind uh, I've mentioned it on the previous webinar that I think it's pretty pretty likely that we'll vote to stay people will vote for the status quo and all other things being equal that's supportive of of cable oh. How are we doing for time? We've got um, yeah, we've got we've got a bit of time. So this has been a um, a, a tricky one, uh, Euro Sterling. I mentioned this in a snapshot video uh, where there's a confluence of resistance and a, the possible beginning of a head and shoulders pattern here. And uh, so far the resistance has held, but we've been unable to break down. And I think the worry at this point is that um, this formation looks a bit more, if we zoom in a bit to the four hour chart that I was on before, this looks more like a continuation pattern than a, um, than a, than a top to me. We, you know, we've had a few attempts at breaking, you know, we had the initial drop lower, that was positive, uh, but we've just been, we've been going nowhere since and um, I think short from the the resistance for formerly mentioned is not looking as great you know and it's looking a bit more likely that we're just going to push back above the the 200 day and get a continuation higher I think at this point 
to feel more confident about this resistance holding, you want to break down of this, this support level. Um, so you can see we haven't had a close below uh, 0.7860, I would call it, to round it off. You could say 50 to be more conservative, 7850. Uh, a close below there, I think, would, um, would open up the gates lower. Obviously, you'd uh, you know if you're waiting for that break lower, you get a lower price, but the move downwards is more likely to continue. So it's that um, it's that old chestnut again. Do you, you know you've obviously short from the higher prices, but we could get a rebound above, or you know you wait for the lower price to, to confirm. Now dollar yen is getting a bit of a bounce here because there's been a lot of talk from Japanese officials, I think there was again overnight, um, just suggesting that they were ready to do some sort of FX intervention. Um, we mentioned it again in a snapshot video a few weeks ago now that uh, the, the 106 to one, uh, 105 to 106 was strong support and we've had a bounce in the market since then um, at that aforementioned level. Uh, basically based on these peaks and this low here and the 200 week moving average so we've got a bounce off a strong support level which is to be expected we also obviously come in line with these uh, the comments from Japanese officials I still tend to think that they're not going to do anything above 100 in dollar yen I think it's going to get down close to 100 maybe 101 or something maybe 101 and change and they'll try and catch the markets off guard with some sort of intervention then so I think the, the I think possibly the market has more room to fall but we have to let the price guide us for the moment we're getting a rebound if we this this 50 day moving average has been um, working quite well as resistance um, so move back above the 50 day and above 110 well you've got you know you've got to kind of question how far the um, you know the likelihood of your premise that it's the market's moving lower at the moment we're still in a bearish trend and uh, people are losing faith in what the Bank of Japan are doing in terms of monetary easing and if they don't intervene directly in the FX market then uh, you know the, still the path of least resistance is lower. So I think we'll, we'll call it a day there. Um, thank you very much for attending today. Uh, much appreciate your presence. Sorry for this slight delay kicking off. Uh, but good luck with trading this week. And uh, this is Jasper Lawler signing off. Cheers.